Hello, welcome back to an Unreal tutorial. We're going to look at something that I think is probably the biggest topic to cover that usually gets skipped in most tutorials, and that is how to actually use C++ and blueprints in your project. This is uh, something that I think is kind of easy once you get the hang of it, but it's it's very elusive. Like, you wouldn't really know how to do this, and it takes a lot of trial and error, and it, it almost doesn't matter how much you try to research it in advance or figure it out. For the most part, it just doesn't seem to work until you uh, really dig your dig your toes in and, uh, and just get into it. So that's what we're going to try to do here. I'm not really going to teach you C++ or anything like that in this tutorial, but I'm going to teach you like where to find everything, how to actually make it in on Unreal, how to convert your project, how your project starts working once you make it a C++ project, and we'll go from there. And I know my voice is uh, a little different. I've been uh, sick for a few days, so it happens. So last episode, you, know, you were instructed to install all these basic things, so I assume you have that all ready to go. And we're just going to dig into it, dive right into it. All right, we've got a little update to do to the engine today. So I'm going to let that happen. And I just want to talk a little bit about the really the biggest thing you need to know about when you're uh, switching your project over to a C++ project or using one in general. And that is basically that you don't launch this anymore. You no longer launch the Epic Games launcher. You no longer launch the Unreal Engine. Instead, you start launching your project from your code editor, probably Visual Studio. I didn't mention in the last video, but you there are other editors that work. I believe Sea Lion has one that works. So you can use that too. But that's the biggest thing is you're no longer going to be launching your program from these editors or from the Unreal stuff. You're going to be launching your actual code and it's going to launch the editor in your project uh, from a code standpoint. All right, we're all updated here and let's just... Let's just go ahead and launch this latest version. And I just want to show you a sample of what changes and what to expect. And uh, the next things you're going to need to know are basically how to actually code uh, for Unreal Engine with C++. For the most part, it's the same as original C++. But Unreal provides some of their own types, as you might expect. And you have to use some certain macros for the editor the Unreal Engine Editor, to uh, understand how to bring your code parts into to blueprints and things like that. So that's really all we're going to do is I'm just going to show you all that and show you some of this workflow. And it is something that is not obvious. Uh, it, I couldn't really find a place that taught it, honestly. The number of uh, Unreal C++ tutorials I've seen and read through is quite numerous at this point. And I still hadn't figured it out until I just did it on my own and powered through it on my own. So I'm hoping that this will be an actual version that actually makes sense. Maybe the only one on, on the internet. Is there any one, other one out there that actually makes sense? I don't know. I haven't found it. Usually they're just convoluted, huge convoluted bunches of nonsense. And they get, jump way past the beginning point that is the most important, which is how to actually do it and what your workflow is going to be like, because that's what you need to know, right? All right, so we're going to just go ahead and just make like a new blank project, which is not blank, and we're going to stick with Blueprint. You can pick Blueprint or C++ here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, there's, there's basically no difference. You can always convert it to a C++ project later. We're going to pick Blueprint here. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, Compile 8,000 shaders for a blank project. Yeah, you heard that right. 8,000 shaders is a blank project. Blows my mind. Okay, fin finally finished uh, compiling this blank project that has all sorts of things in it. Definitely not a blank project, but whatever you want to call it, Unreal. Work on your ethics there. It's pretty, uh, I don't know why you just lie right off the bat. Kind of is going to just turn people away, isn't it? Like, I don't know, whatever. You do what you want. Who cares? Don't call it a blank project when it's not a blank project. That's all I'm saying. Uh, kind of annoying, but it really doesn't matter. Just that goes into other issues about large companies and trying to manage software and uh, yada yada. Who cares? 
All right, so this is just a blueprint project. We got this little uh, untitled world here. And if we want to turn this into a C++ project and start using C++, really all we got to do is go up to Tools and go to a New C++ Class. And it does give you a little hint here. It says the code can only be compiled if you have Visual Studio installed, etc. So we're going to do that. And uh, we could make an empty one, but that's going to kind of uh, not be that useful to start. So we're going to do like an actor. Let's do an actor. Actors are pretty, pretty common. And it kind of gives you a lot of tips about it. These will be better later or more handy later. But for now, let's just get in here. Let's say we just... Let's just leave it my actor. That's fine. And you can make it public or private. For the most part, if you're making a class, you probably want it public. Uh, that way you have access to the stuff you're doing. Like, who are you keeping it private from? from? It's your own project. So, it, just a, that's just a C++ thing, uh, a syntax. It doesn't actually mean public and private like you would think. Um, but I would suggest just picking public. Uh, off the bat. Now, the first time you do this, it's actually going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it's going to, for me, it stays stuck at 43% usually for like several minutes. And I don't know exactly what it's doing, but basically it is setting up your project to be launched from, from Visual Studio rather than from the Unreal Engine Editor. So, and that's a, a big point. Once you do this, you know, like I said earlier, this, this is like the main point of the whole thing. You no longer launch your, your, uh, little program here from unreal and there we go we get let me get this project now includes sources close the editor and build from your ide would you like to edit the code now sure whatever launches visual studio automatically all right so where were we all right well so we made it a, a uh, new c plus plus class we did a bunch of stuff on its own and uh now we're supposed to launch our project from Visual Studio. That's uh, that's where we're at here. So we're going to do that. We're just going to close out the Unreal Engine there and just hit play on this and watch it do its thing. It's going to, I don't know what the heck it's doing. It's going to launch the Unreal, the Epic Games Launcher. I don't know why it would do it. You know, it doesn't need to launch the launcher, but whatever. It really just needs to launch this particular project in the engine or maximized it rather because I think it was already running I don't know I don't know these big companies I tell you what trying to make sense of what they're doing is not worth your time I'll just be honest it's not worth your time they do all sorts of nonsense that is let's get some light in here it's just a waste of time so I know that sounds uh, pessimistic or whatever but it's just the truth you have to realize when you're using other people's software is that uh, most of it is not for you. Like, just look at the, the size of how many files are here. So we got the Unreal Engine. That's probably necessary, sure. Um, way too many shaders. Well, this is probably shader generator code. And uh, the project you're working on. And then they've got some other just random things down here that you probably don't need but you probably have to leave them where it's going to break things because that's that's how it goes but as you can see it's taken a while to compile here and uh we're just going to wait can you imagine your project taking this long to build when it's blank like if we go look at this file we made it's got a few things but nothing substantial so what on earth is this actually doing why would it take so long to launch a blank project? Here we go. It's finally going. It's finally going. We're up to... We're going to see... We get to see how much memory it's using. It's another cool thing. You get to profile. We're already up to a gig of memory on a blank project. What do you need a gig of memory for a blank project for? beats me there's absolutely nothing going on here supposedly so uh i literally can't do this with a straight face and not just be honest i two gigs of nothing 
we getting the three gigs? We getting the three gigs of nothing soon? No, still two gigs. Even my cat doesn't like it. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's just meowing up a storm over there. It's still going. It's still doing stuff. All right, so we got up to six gigs of nothing. Six gigs of memory used on a blank project. I'm just like doing the opposite of selling this, but the reality is you basically have to use a game engine or you're just going to spend half your life trying to make an engine. Uh, yeah, or a long time, not necessarily half your life, but you get the point. The engine's already done. That's nice. It's worth the trade off. It's worth the trade off. It just absolutely blow seven gigs. We're up to seven gigs here. A lot of overhead here, I guess, apparently, or maybe it's, uh, something else. All right. Anyway, that's what you got to do. You got to go in here. You got to launch the, the debugger here. And uh, that's how that's how you work on your project now. You either write the C++ code and then launch it when you're ready to test it out. Or if you want to work with the level editor, you got to launch it here. And then go work with your level editor after you launch it here. So that's kind of the new way of, of working this thing. Uh, once you add in some C++ code. If you're using pure blueprints, not doing any C++, you can just launch the editor itself. You can just launch the engine itself and, uh, and work that way. And that's, that can be fine, but at some point you're probably going to need, uh, C++, I would imagine. And you don't necessarily, depending on what you're doing, but you can do, uh, supposedly you can do the same things in blueprints as you can with C++. And I've, for the most part, found that to be true. But uh, you can't really work on this on like a small laptop or something unless you're doing only the C++ code and then like, you know, pushing the code and then you go build it on some other thing, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't to half the people out there, but don't worry about it. What we actually really want to look at here for now is just these macros. You'll notice that every C++ file we make is going to have some standard C++ stuff, like Pragma wants. It's going to have core minimal, which is, uh, I don't know, what is this? This is probably just some, the core types for Unreal, forwards, some object hier hierarchies, etc. Just a bunch of, just basic stuff for Unreal. Mainly types and such. Core minimal, that's what you would expect. And we got some uh, actor framework. This got included because we said it was an actor. So it's going to automatically do that. And one of the unique things here is this dot generated dot H. So this is a bit different. And if you're writing your own files, you got to make sure to add this in. When you uh, add a new file through uh, this tools, new C++ class, it automatically puts this dot generated in. It automatically does this macro. And basically this generated is just a bunch of like, uh, uh, code for this file to help it. Well, what's the word? I think they call it reflection. Basically, so the editor can actually see what this code file does and put these options into the engine. And uh, that, that's it. So you basically got to have that. And whatever your thing is, you got to put macros in front of it. And thing, I'm using loosely, obviously. If it's a class, you got to put U class. If it's a macro, you got to put U macro or struct if it's a struct you got to put use struct and there's some other ones too so those are things you'll need to get a little bit familiar with and basically this is just a macro that unreal defines in some header that is uh you know it's going to be some complicated thing but basically it helps set up the class for unreal to to reflect it properly so that it can be uh, it could show you the options it needs to show in the editor and i'm realizing that this sounds very confusing and that's because in my opinion it is, but it is just a learning curve. You do just have to get used to it because it's something you'll see over and over again and it will just become second nature after a while. All right, so let's look at some other things. We got this other macro, everything purple here is like a macro. Uh, we got the name of the project underscore API and then uh, the name of your class. We just left it default, that's why it's that. It puts an A in front of it. Uh, sometimes it puts other things in front of it, just depending on what it is. So get used to that too. And then we always have this generated body. 
and you basically are going to put this in every class or every struct you make and it's also going to once again help with this whole reflection thing it's just a required thing it's a macro that just generates some things you need basically so i'm not going to go into too much detail just know that you have to have that in there and then the rest of the stuff is going to look a lot more familiar a lot more c plus plusy it's just this some of these things mainly this generated dot h of your file name and this u class and this generated body and this api thing those all have to be in your header all right and then the rest of this is going to look pretty standard we got a constructor and we got some uh some virtual overrides of begin play because obviously this actor is inheriting from another one so if you want to change what it does by default you got to override it and same with the tick and you're probably going to want to add more of these as you go this is just a sample one but uh this is only really the start of it if you want to put in variables or functions well mainly let's talk about variables for a moment say you want to have like i don't know maybe an integer called uh i don't know we'll just call it test one for now that's fine for c plus plus you just have an integer named test one but unreal is not going to understand what this is you're not going to be able to mess with this variable in unreal until you put above it another macro called u property basically this just tells this it's part of this whole reflection thing once again uh, part of all this other stuff that just generates some code in the background that tells unreal engine that it can see this variable but you do have to give u property uh some things you got to tell it some things i usually just put uh okay well nice thing about this intellisense at least when you're getting started is it's going to help you out with what you can put here some of these you'll have to look up i'm sure but for the most part people put things like uh blueprints read write or something along those lines and that means you're now going to see this test one in blueprints if you uh if you instantiate this actor you made all right so we got all that going we've saved uh we can restart to actually recompile it here and we should now be able to see this in the engine but anytime you change the code you got to relaunch the engine it's kind of a convoluted process in my opinion so you usually want to have a pretty good idea of what you're doing and pound out all the work because it's launching seven gigs of stuff every time so i think it'd be better to turn this blank project into a blank project if you intend to make a blank project and uh unreal maybe you should just do that by default but we probably just want to make our own map which is a level so we're just going to go into our content drawer here right click make a level and we'll just call it actual blank level for now doesn't matter and we'll launch this and you can see what an actual blank level looks like it's blank <laughs> who would have thought who would have thought